What's up guys? All right, it is my Tuesday, your Wednesday workout coming at you for the home section, right? The home section today has a little bit of skill building to start out. I didn't write it up here, but the skill building is the Turkish get up. And the Turkish get up is one of those movements that allows you to kind of focus, teach you to focus with your brain, but also move with your body at the same time. There's a little bit of a uh, technique involved in it, a little bit of progression, and we'll go through that here in a second. The Metcon is a 14 minute AMRAP with a descending rep scheme. And I've kind of really grown to love these type workouts over this uh, quarantine self stay at home thing um, because it kind of breaks out the monotony that is an AMRAP, right? Instead of it just being the same reps over and over and over again for 14 minutes, now we have a descending rep scheme going down by two starting at 14. So 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. The way that works, you'll do 14 box jump, 14 slam ball, 14 cow run or cow bike or whatever, and then 12, 12, 12, 8, 8, 8, or 10, 10, 10, 8, 8, 8, 8 and so on and so on, right? Um, the idea here is that you're gonna maintain a consistent pace. Hopefully we'll make it through one complete round and then almost through another one. Uh, but as the reps descend, your pace should increase, right? And when you get back to the 14, or maybe we slow it down a little bit and then pick it up again towards the end, especially as time starts to run out. So descending rep scheme inside the AMRAP. Okay, so before we actually jump into this AMRAP, we have a little bit of skill building. Like I said, the Turkish get up. The Turkish get up is something that's gonna work your core, it's gonna work some shoulder stability, but also work up here as well. Here's how it starts. You're essentially gonna lay on the ground. You're gonna bring, we'll say, we'll start with our left knee up, right arm into the air, left arm out to the side. You're gonna do a little mini sit up and kind of come up onto your elbow. Then you're going to go from your elbow up to your hand, so you're going to press up to your hand. Through the palm of your hand, you're going to push down through the floor and bridge up. From that bridge, you're going to sweep that leg that's bent underneath the other leg where you created that little space into a kneeling position. Then you're going to stand up tall, looking up at the kettlebell or the dumbbell or the backpack the whole time. Then you're going to go in reverse motion. So you're going to take a step back, put your knee on the ground. Then you kind of have to kind of feel for the ground with your hand leg back out into that bridge position, drop your hip down, elbow, and then lay down, right? You really have to go through that progression. You have to tell yourself that progression. You have to kind of walk yourself through it to really gauge that. Um, but follow it, use whatever you can. If you don't have a weight that you can hold or a backpack that you can hold, then just hold your hand up. But going through that progression and understanding that movement is very important uh, to kind of really building a skill. After we've completed the skill of the uh, Turkish get-up part, the extended warm-up, we're going into our conditioning piece. The conditioning piece starts with box jumps or tuck jumps, whatever you can do. Preferably box jumps if you have the ability to do it. Find something you could jump on, whether it be a box or a raised surface, but make sure it's a height that you feel comfortable jumping because that's a lot of jumps. Jump up, step down. Now, when we go to jump on something, we always load and explode. So we kind of drop the chest forward, butt goes back, arms go back behind us, and we swing those arms up to help carry us up and onto the box or whatever object we're jumping on. Keep your eyes on it, lock it out the top, and then step down. Now, if we don't have a box, we can do tuck jumps. Tuck jumps are something that I have found to be harder than box jumps, but it's something anybody can do. You essentially start in like a half squat, you jump in the air, get full extension, tuck your knees up as high as you can, and then land back in the half squat. It's very important that you land back in the squat. One, because it kind of helps the cycle rate, and two, it's a little bit better on your knees. Now, when you do land and when you jump, make sure those knees aren't collapsing in. One thing I saw uh, that we could even modify even further is if you have some type of elevated surface, like a bench or something, you may not want to jump onto a bench, but you could use it for bench hops. And essentially, you're just going to lock your arms out, put them on top of the bench, you're gonna pop from one side of the bench to the other and back and forth, and you could do that as well. Very, um, very aerobic or gonna get your heart rate up, get you breathing heavy, but still allowed for that little bit of jumping stimulus that we're looking for. All right, the second movement is the slam ball or ground to overhead. Slam ball is a great movement. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I love the slam ball, but you have to do it correctly to get out of it what, uh, what we want. Otherwise, you're just doing a ground to overhead. So if you have the ability to do a slam ball, making sure that we start low with our butt, keeping our chest nice and tall. You're gonna drive the floor down, pushing through your feet, extend the hips quickly, and kind of pop and pull that ball overhead. Once you've done that, now you're gonna actively slam the ball into the ground by pushing your butt back and driving down with your lats. And I say active because you're trying to chase that ball down and catch it as it bounces. 
right? If you're just kind of letting the ball fall from the top, you're not getting the slam part out of it. And there's not a lot of things that we can do that creates force downwards in, in our program. So take advantage of it on the slam ball. Slam, catch, repeat, pop, and extend. The ground to overhead would be if you don't have a slam ball. It's essentially the same thing. You start low, you pull overhead. Instead of slamming, though, you come back down to the ground and reset back up, right? Um, you can use a backpack, a kettlebell, a dumbbell, whatever you have, use it, extend quickly, pull it overhead. 14 minutes is a, is a good time frame. It's a time frame I like personally. Um, I think it's a, a great workout, a great mixture of kind of some explosive work with the jumping, uh, some hip hinging with the ground overhead or the slam balls, and then some cardio work with whatever you choose to do, cowl on a machine, run, uh, burpee, whatever. Uh, 14 minutes is, is a good time frame for this rep scheme as well. You don't have a monotonous rep scheme, but by the time you make it through one complete round, it'll be a little over halfway. So you kind of have that mental push to kind of get back through the rest of it. I think the key here is quick transitions from movement to movement. So just make sure that you're uh, kind of planning out which movement you're gonna go to next and know what you're gonna do when you get there. All right, good luck everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.